In Creo Parametric 10.0, there have been a lot of enhancements to creating dimension patterns, specifically with patterns of patterns. And I'm going to show that over three different videos. There is an excellent video on PTC's learning connector called Dimension Pattern, More Flexibility for Pattern of Pattern. I highly recommend that you check it out. There's a lot of information in that video. That's why I'm going to be taking it a little bit slower. Anyhow, in order to show you the functionality, I'm starting off in Creo Parametric 9.0. I'm going to create an axis pattern, then I'm going to pattern that pattern. And to reduce the amount of flashing on the screen, I'm going to go to my options and then selection and turn off pre-selection highlighting just because when I go to pick the dimensions, as I move my mouse over the model, it'll end up just flashing a lot. Anyhow, I have this part model. It is a simple extrude with an axis and a hole. I'm going to select the hole and then choose pattern from the mini toolbar. And I'm going to start off with a simple axis pattern. Let me select the axis to pattern about. And I'm going to create four instances. And I'm going to change the option here to angular extent. So four over 360 degrees. This looks great. I will hit the check mark, and then I decide that I want to do another pattern of this pattern. So I can select the pattern and then go to pattern, and it automatically defaults to the dimension pattern. And I want to zoom in and show you the dimensions that are available to you. You can see that we have our 360 degrees. Here's the zero degrees and the 25 radius from the original hole, and here is the diameter of the hole. So we really don't have that many dimensions to choose from, but let me choose the radial dimension, and I'm going to use an increment of 50, and I'm also going to choose, let's make about five of these. And so when I hit the check mark, you can see the pattern that is created, and again, in each loop, we only have four instances of the original pattern. They're just getting wider. The circles are getting bigger. Let's say, though, that I want to have more instances as the pattern is created. How can I do that? Oh, yeah, one other thing to show you with regard to this. I want to go back to the original pattern and edit definition. What you'll notice in this case here, we've got our initial different dimensions in here. When I'm creating the pattern, you don't notice any other dimensions on the computer screen. Oh yes, one other thing to show in Creo Parametric 9.0. Let me go back to the original pattern and I'm going to edit definition. So here we have the number of instances in the first direction. Let me change this from four to a value of two. Hey, everything is good. I can hit the check mark and there we have our pattern sort of like getting a symmetric pattern, but let's now go back to the pattern and, oops, not that one. Let me hit the cancel button. Let me expand and go to the original pattern and edit definition. Now, if I try, if I try to change this to a value of one and hit the enter key, hey, in Creo 9, it does not allow this. It says you have entered a value that is out of range. The, the range is two to 100,000. So let's hit the OK button to correct this. I'll go back to my original value for and hit the check mark. So just note in Creo Parametric 9.0 and earlier, you could not have a number of instances in your pattern equal to one. So now let's jump over to Creo Parametric 10.0 in order to take a look at the enhancements. Okay, let's repeat the process in Creo 10. Here I have the whole, I will choose pattern. Let's change the pattern type to an axis pattern and then pick the axis that we want to pattern about. And once again, I'm going to create four instances. I will choose the angular extent and we'll do it over 360 degrees. What I want to point out, though, is that you see that we have this dimension here for creating subsequent rings of the patterns. You can change that radial distance. Maybe I'll change it to 25, but I'm only going to have one member in the second direction. So that's one thing to note. Sort of like all your different patterns are kind of in two directions now when you are creating them. They just have a single instance. 
Let me hit the check mark in order to create that one. Now let's do our dimension pattern. I will select the pattern and then choose to do a dimension. And you'll notice that we have a whole bunch more dimensions this time. We have the number of pattern instances in the first direction and the second direction, as well as that second dimension increment for the axis pattern. So anyhow, for the different dimensions, once again, I will choose, oops, that's the wrong one. Let me hit the enter key and get rid of that one. Let's remove that. I meant to choose this one for incrementing and let's use a value of 50 for that one. And now with the control key held down, I'm going to select the pattern dimension. So it's a really big change that you can now include the different pattern instance dimensions as one of the dimensions to increment for a dimension pattern. And the default value here is one. So I will hit the check mark. And so now you can see that we have our second ring of instances and there are five of them there. Let me go back to the pattern. I'm going to edit definition. Let's create five different ones. You can see a preview of how far apart they will be located. But let's increase the increment. Instead of using an increment of one, the default value, let's use a value of four and then hit the enter key and hit the check mark. And so now we've got a bunch more instances. Let me select the surface and view straight on. But let's say I want something a little bit more regular. Rather than increasing the number of instances by four, in each subsequent ring. Let's say I want to double the number of instances. Well, we can use a relation and we can write relations for the different dimensions in the pattern, including the number of pattern instances. So let me go back to this pattern and I will choose to edit definition. Here is the increment and I will check the box to define the increment by a relation knows that the value went away in there. Now when I choose the edit button, that will take me into the relations editor. And it gives me a little bit of information about the different kinds of dimensions that you can use for driving your relation. So for example, there's IDX1 and IDX2. Those are the number of, or excuse me, that's the pattern instance index in the first and second directions. You also have a lead V value, which is the leader value of the dimension. And then you have member underscore I and member underscore V. Member underscore I is the relation driven increment in the specific dimension or direction, but member underscore V gives the resultant dimension in that specific direction. So I recommend that you play around with these. I covered this once in a video years and years ago. But again, what I want to do is I want to double the number of instances in each direction. So I'll write a relation the first time using member underscore I, and this is going to be equal to, and if I do two and then shift six, which is the caret, which is the exponent, I'm going to do two to the IDX one, uh, I'm going to do IDX1 plus 1, and then close my parentheses. And I can verify if there are any errors. No, there are not, so that is good. So I will click the OK button to get out of the Relations Editor. And then I will hit the check mark. And now we are doubling the number of instances in each direction. Let me turn off my axis display. And so that looks really nice and neat. If you wanted to do this in Creo 9 and earlier, well, it would have been pretty complicated. You would have had to use maybe a fill pattern and get the values exactly right, or maybe a point pattern. I don't know, it would just have been difficult. But now we have a nice and easy way to increase the number of instances. Let me go back to that pattern and I'm going to edit definition. And let's go to the relation and I will choose edit once more. And here we have the value here. I'm gonna change from member underscore I to member underscore V. 
And if I use member underscore V, then if I use plus two in here and then hit the verify button and then, okay. By the way, hitting the verify button isn't mandatory, but I always like to do that just to make sure I didn't mistype something. I'll click okay and hit the check mark. And there we have our number of instances increasing. And regarding the number of instances that you can have in a pattern, hey, let me go back to the original pattern and edit definition. Here we are using four in the first direction. I can change that to a value of two. Hey, there is no problem. I can also change this to a value of one. And you'll notice this time we are not getting an error. You are allowed to have one pattern member in the first direction. In this case though, if I do that, hey, it's going to look a little bit weird because of the relation that's driving this. So let's go back to the original pattern and edit definition and change its value to four. But the important thing to note is that you can now have a pattern with the number of instances being a value of one, and that will come into play in the next video.